Okay, I realize that I'm about to preach to my own choir. This video is a response to Bristol Palin and her comments regarding the recent backlash against her blog posts about President Obama's stance on same-sex marriage. After her original post, she made a second one whining about being bullied about her comments denouncing same-sex parents. Apparently the irony went right over her head. And yesterday, May 22nd, she made a third post in response to the responses to drive home the point that she's no victim. Yes, she's a strong hypocrite. So, I'm going to do my best to explain to Bristol why she's making an ass out of herself. We'll start with the first blog post that sparked it all. In addressing the president's comments in regards to his daughter's friends who have same-sex parents, she had this hysterically ironic point to make. While it's great to listen to your kids' ideas, there's also a time when dads simply need to be dads. In this case, it would have been helpful for him to explain to Malia and Sasha that while her friends' parents are no doubt lovely people, that's not a reason to change thousands of years of thinking about marriage. Or that, as great as her friends may be, we know that in general, kids do better growing up in a mother-father home. Ideally, fathers help shape their kids' worldview. Sometimes dads should lead their family in the right ways of thinking. In this case, it would have been nice if the president would have been an actual leader and helped shape their thoughts, instead of merely reflecting what many teenagers think after one too many episodes of Glee. Okay, Bristol, it's really sad that you fail to see so many red flags in your way of thinking. First of all, as I already mentioned, you're a hypocrite. You advocate the preservation of so-called traditional marriage and families, but you yourself have chosen to stray away from that mold and be a single mother by having a child out of wedlock and then breaking off two engagements with the father of your son. Personally, I am all for not marrying someone simply because he knocked you up. But the point is, your choices conflict with your ultra-conservative positions that you tout. Secondly, you have a lot of nerve implying that same-sex couples make deficient parents. So I'm going to be kind and assume that you're not making any reference to a person's genitals having anything to do with their parenting skills. So you can only be talking about gender roles. You really don't want to open up that can of worms, young lady. Or you'll inevitably find your arguments backing you into the kitchen and making me a sandwich. Thirdly, this assertion that the ideas and motivations of marriage have remained unchanged for thousands of years, and until now, is just patently false. It wasn't until relatively recently that marriages have been primarily love matches for couples. For much of human history, the most common type of marriage has been between one man and however many women he could financially support, and those women, some of them barely being out of puberty, very rarely had any choice in the matter. Marriages weren't seen as institution for romantic life partners, but instead grounded a practice of families bartering their women, who were seen as property of first their fathers and then their husbands. And just the thought of an unmarried woman becoming pregnant and then choosing not to marry the father would have been simply intolerable, and she could certainly expect to be disowned entirely. Fortunately for all of us, it wasn't until the Enlightenment when folks started rethinking that idea of marriage and realized that women had more to offer than just being housekeeping baby factories. Now, there are some societies around the world that still follow the old ways. Allah. Fourthly, your statements about Obama needing to shape his children's worldview smacks of favoring indoctrination. What you're basically stating is that he is a weak father because he actually took the time to listen and consider what his teenage daughters had to say, and that the role of a strong father and leader is to simply dictate what to think and how to think, rather than encourage young people to think for themselves. Why else would you have titled the blog post, Hail to the Chiefs, Malia and Sasha Obama? You're insinuating that the girls run the household just because their parents don't automatically stamp out their points of view. It's pretty telling of what your family dynamic must be like. And finally, your little quip about watching too much Glee is just a fine example of your offhanded bigotry, so you really have no room to whine about being attacked. You threw the first punch. And the next passages I'm about to cite are just more examples of a spoiled kid being fed her own medicine. 
Pop culture needs a little bit of debate. It needs a little bit of disagreement. Because not everyone who watches their shows or listens to their music thinks the way the directors, producers, and actors think. When you're in Hollywood, you'll meet some great people, some terrible people, and many somewhere in between. In other words, they're people just like everyone else. But what you won't find is any disagreement about things like gay marriage or abortion. <coughs> For those folks, there's one way to think, and anyone who disagrees is stupid, hypocritical, hateful, or bigoted. Of course, I'm not the only one facing the wrath of the Hollywood-type sheeple. There are some celebrities bold enough to speak out, and they get attacked and ostracized too. Here's a news flash, guys. Your hate and bullying don't work. People see through it, and they don't like to be pushed around. You think it's completely obvious that you're right, but this younger generation is more pro-life than their parents, and voters just keep defending traditional marriage. Why? Why would we if you've been telling us what to think for all these years? Because we think for ourselves. And we'll keep thinking for ourselves no matter what you call us. So keep sending the hate. But realize that hate doesn't win. We think for ourselves. You sure about that? I mean, that declaration doesn't really jive with your earlier criticisms of the president not telling his own kids what to think. When you advocate for the restriction of the same rights that you enjoy to a small portion of the population that desires people of their own sex, which nobody has ever been able to demonstrate has any adverse effect on anything or anyone other than homophobes, you have to accept that a lot of people are going to be totally disgusted with you. To even feign surprise at that is offending intelligence. Because yes, it is stupid and hypocritical and hateful and bigoted to tell people that they don't deserve marriage equality because of some outdated, arbitrary, and fictional ideal that even you don't adhere to. But let me see if I understand this clear. You're being bullied, and yet you're no victim. Well, yes, you're certainly no victim, and your attempt to portray one is pitiful indeed. But this isn't a case of bullying either. You're being ostracized by a society that is tired of the unsubstantiated rhetoric about so-called traditional family values. But you keep on keeping on, young lady. Tell those mean old queers that you won't be deterred from speaking out against their civil rights. You don't get to claim bullying when your whole position revolves around the idea that some families matter and some don't, and those that don't aren't worthy of equal rights. It is the people in your camp that use the law and religion to restrict the personal rights of anybody who doesn't fit within your standard. And after we have all seen the damaging effects of real bullying and torment, it's just insulting to see you flip the criticism around and try to make yourself look like the one being persecuted. You don't get to beat people in the head politely and then claim that they're being hateful when they beat you back.